What's up everyone, Mike here from The Art of Guitar. Today I want to show you a guitar lesson, an introductory guitar lesson, that I used to do back in the old days when I taught 60 students a week. And for a while I was feeling very fortunate because I had so many students and I thought it'd probably be kind of cool to offer one free lesson a week to just some random student. And uh, if they sign up or not, it didn't really matter to me because I was pretty full anyway. But I realized that with this particular lesson sequence, so many people learned so much in the first lesson that they always wanted to sign up. I had about a 99% uh, return rate, which is really cool. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you what that lesson is. And if you're teaching guitar, this could help you sh uh, maybe show you what to teach on the first lesson, uh, at least what I do. And then if you're a student you can, and you're just starting out, you could just learn the lesson for free right here. Okay, I always wanna make sure you're sitting up straight. A lot of people hold the guitar at the, you know, in the beginning and they sort of slouch back like that. So just make sure the guitar is sitting on your lap. And I prefer to put it, if you're right-handed, on my right leg, like this. Uh, some people you'll see do this. This is more of a classical way to hold the guitar. Some shredders do this as well. It's a good idea, but I prefer you do this, so that when you stand up and play, it'll pretty much be in the same spot, okay? As far as uh, just holding onto the guitar, what I like to do is I like to take my form and sort of rest it on the body, and it balances itself if you do that most of the time. And then, as far as just the fretting hand, what I always tell people to do is to, right now, for the most part, keep your thumb behind the neck, so it's gonna be more like this, and there's a line on the back of my guitar, that's helpful, but I just want your fingers to be very free when we do our first little exercise, okay? Later on, the thumb can come over the top, that does happen, but for today, try to keep it in the back for the most part, okay? And then as far as holding the pick, uh, this is all pretty quick. I go more into detail on the website, but uh, I'm just going to go through it a little bit quicker today. I want this to fit in the half hour lesson time. Okay, so if you take up your guitar pick and hold it at the nose like that, and then your other hand makes sort of the okay sim sign with your hand like this, go like that with your first finger and put it over your thumb, and then stick the pick inside like this. This is what I like to do. You might think, well, the pick's sticking out like sideways, right? But when you point it towards you like this, suddenly the pick, the nose of it's pointing right at the guitar. Some people think you're supposed to have the pick going, pointing along with where your thumb's pointing. But then if you bring it to the guitar, you have to do this to make it work, which doesn't make sense. So make sure the nose of the pick is pointing towards you and you've got this sort of thing going on. You can curl your, your you can kind of make a fist, don't really clench like that. I sort of leave my fingers dangling like that. Okay, then what you want to do is you just want to start to strum the strings a little bit. And just get a feel for that. What I tell people is to take your wrist and rotate it like that. Kind of like you're, you know, doing this with your hand versus your whole arm moving like that. You don't want to be this person. Okay, it's hard. It's a hard habit to break, so you don't want to start it. Okay, so let's go ahead and just take the pick and let it fall down through the strings like this. Okay, so some people ask if you should go up at this point. You can, but it's a little bit tricky because the pick might feel like it's getting stuck, okay? So what I like to do is if I do do an upstroke, I do like a sweeping motion where I tilt the pick slightly so that it'll come up the strings in a good way. Okay, if you don't tilt the pick, you can easily get stuck in the strings. You notice you could do that without even using your fretting hand yet, your left hand if you're right-handed. Just the forearms holding the guitar in place and you're strumming through. Some guitars are so well balanced, like mine's pretty good. You could just take your forearm off and still do it. But there are a lot of guitars, especially if you put the tuner at the top where it starts to dip down. Okay, so you might be wondering, you're holding the guitar, you're strumming, you kind of know how to have your left hand a little bit, you know, the thumb in the back. Shouldn't you tune your guitar first? A lot of people ask that. But in the first lesson, I don't like to spend a lot of time tuning because if you spend all that time teaching the student how to tune, the whole lesson's done by the time you're done. You know what I mean? If you're explaining each string and then how to bring it up higher or lower and what to do, and then their first lesson they go, I didn't really go home with much, you know? Or at least it's gonna seem that way. So I usually tune their guitar for them. And since I'm not physically there to tune your guitar for you like I would do at a real lesson, uh, this is the hardest part of trying to teach online is I don't know what your guitar sounds like, so it could be way out of tune. What I recommend is either bring it to another guitar player who knows how to tune or a guitar store and just have them tune it. Now, it probably will go out of tune a little bit, but at least you'll be in the ballpark. You know what I'll actually do for you guys, too, is on the Art of Guitar website, I'll make that one lesson open to the public 
so that if you want to go look for it, it'll be called tuning with an electric tuner, electronic tuner, and uh, you could do it from there. Teaching you how to tune using the fifth fret method takes a lot longer, and there's way more involved with it, so we'll skip that for now. But if you want to do the electronic tuner lesson on the website for free, go right ahead. The string names are important to know right away because I'm going to be referring to them today. So I like to say E, A, D, G, B, E. I go in that order, so I go from the, the thickest string to the, th the skinniest. And then I say, to remember it, a lot of people think Eddie ate dynamite, goodbye Eddie. And because it's a mnemonic device they call that, it's really easy to remember because you just remember that little saying, Eddie ate dynamite, goodbye Eddie. And you're good. You've learned the names of the strings. You know there's six of them now. And you know how to hold your pick, how to strum a little bit, and how to sit. Your posture should be like this, okay? If you start to slouch, remember, you don't want to set that in motion right away. You want to sort of stand, sit up straight so that when you play live, you're not like this, okay? Plus it's easier on your back. Okay, I like to jump right in and have the student just start playing notes, all right? I don't mess around. I don't sit there and try to teach them how to read music right away. Obviously, I didn't teach how to tune right away, so we're getting right into playing. And then you really start to feel what it's like to actually play the guitar, and you get more excited about it. All right, so let's do this. When I say the first string on the guitar, I'm talking about the skinniest string. So I want you to take your pick and just pluck the first string. Okay, if you remember our little saying, that's Eddie, so it's going to be E. That is the E note. Okay, so what, what I want you to do is practice just picking downstrokes on that one string. So go like this. So you can also do this without your fretting hand. You just do this for a while. Get used to the feel of plucking a string. Okay, now our fretting hand's getting a little restless. We gotta get it into the party a little bit. Let's go ahead and we're gonna count up these strange looking boxes, okay? These are called frets on the guitar, these metal bars. But today, to make it simple, I'm gonna refer to each of these boxes as frets, and we're gonna count up a certain amount, all right? So if you start counting, this would be one, two, three, four, five, and so on, all the way up to my guitar goes to 22. So what I want you to do is I want you to count up to five. So one, two, three, four, five on the skinny string, okay? And all I want you to do is place your pointer finger, your index finger, in that box on the skinny string. And what we're gonna do is we're going to push down a little bit until the string touches the metal bar that's right here. That's all it takes to make a note, actually. So there's a couple quick little tips here. Be sure to use your fingertip. Speaking of tips, uh, press down, or it's called fretting, right behind the metal bar, right behind the fret, okay? Not on the metal bar, not in the middle of the box, but right here. This is the best spot right here. And then use just enough pressure to make that happen, all right? Now, hold that down, take your pick, and just pluck that note. All right, hopefully you hear a difference from when you played an open string. Let's try an open string once. Now let's go back to pressing down. I kind of hate to say that. Fretting the fifth fret of the first string. Hear the difference? Okay, so now we're gonna do that picking thing we did earlier with the open string with this note fretted. So just play it four times with me. Ready, go. One, two, three, four. Now don't push super hard, otherwise your finger's gonna hurt, you're gonna have this huge line on your finger and it's just not gonna feel good, all right? So, and it's not gonna sound the best. So really just use enough pressure to make it happen. You'll know if it's too little pressure. Too much, you'll just start to feel that pain a little bit and you'll push the string out of tune eventually, all right? Now don't lift off your finger. I don't want you guys to go like this when you go to the next note. Instead, what I want you to do is keep that there as an anchor. So you sort of have your hand anchored right here. Take your middle finger and place it on the fret next to it, so the sixth fret. We're still on the skinny string, the first string, okay? So now we have the fifth fret and the sixth fret pushed down. And really, only the sixth fret's going to make a noise. So it's whatever finger is closest to your pick, it's going to affect the sound. So let's go ahead and play that note now. So take your pick and pluck it. By the way, you might notice when I'm holding my pick, I'm not holding it so close to the nose of it that I can't get the pick to hold the string. 
And this is more common. I'm not holding it so far away that it feels like the pick's going to fall out of my hand. That's a terrible feeling. It's just kind of in the middle, if not more towards the nose, but I still have enough to make the, the note happen without it feeling like it's flopping all over the place, okay? So let's do four of the sixth fret note, okay? Ready, go. One, two, three, four. Now we can do this fun little game. We go back to the first finger four times on the fifth fret, go. One, two, three, four. Put the middle finger back down four times, go. One, two, three, four. Okay, you could probably guess what's next, the ring finger. Now, a, an important thing is to keep these fingers curved because you really want your fingertips to be doing most of the work, okay? If you're flat, it's not good. You wanna keep them curved as much as possible. If your hand starts to hurt, make sure you sort of relax it. You can always do hand stretches, which we go into deeply on the website, finger yoga, I call it. But for today, you should be okay. We're not gonna do too much. All right, now we're gonna have the ring finger, the third finger, Still on the skinniest string, okay? But this time on the seventh fret. So we have five, six, seven, right in a row. Let's play that four times, go. One, two, three, four. And just to speed things up, the next one, of course, is gonna be the pinky. The pinky's gonna feel the weakest, so give it some, some time to develop. Let's do that one four times, go. One, two, three, four. So we're starting a warm-up exercise without even knowing it. It's called the spider exercise. We're going to go one, two, three, four finger-wise, but we're going to play each of them four times each. Okay, let's start from the beginning. First finger, go. One, two, three, four. Place your second finger down next to it, go. Third finger. Pinky. A lot of people think you should go backwards at first. I wouldn't do that until maybe later lessons. We do do more uh, expanded spider exercise on the website, but not today. What I want you to do instead is once you can do that, move to the second string and do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna speed it up, you don't have to. Then of course the third string. See, everything sequences. Now, if you want to stop at the third string, that's totally fine. Going to the fourth, fifth, and sixth strings can be a little bit tough on the wrist at first because you're not used to this feeling. So I want you to relax before your wrist starts to hurt a little bit. You don't want that happening. You don't want wrist pain right off the bat. Okay, so the least that you should be able to do after the first lesson is at least the first string, all four fingers, just get a sound out of each one. If you can get a good sound out of the first one, do four times on each of them. That's huge, okay? Your eventual goal is to go across all six strings, doing four of each, and then eventually we'll do two of each and one of each. But for today, stick to four, it's totally fine. Some people ask, can I do upstrokes when I do that? I wouldn't recommend it right away. You don't wanna go like this right away. Okay, because you're not really able to do upstrokes as well as you could do downstrokes, and the downstrokes are more important at this, uh, at this stage, at this level. So in later lessons, we definitely will do upstrokes. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump right into some chord shapes because once you could play a couple chord shapes, you feel like you're already playing songs. That's a great thing to already feel like you're doing stuff with a guitar. So what I want you to do now, we have the fingers warmed up a little bit. We used all four of them, so we should be able to make a few easy chords. I say easy, but they can be challenging at first. What I want you to do right now is to find the third string. So remember, we start at the skinniest string. One, two, three. This string is called G. Okay, so what you need to do is take your index finger, and we're gonna place it on the third string, but the first fret right here. If you want to, you could take your pick and just pluck the third string, make sure it's making a sound. Okay, sounds good. If it sounds like this, you're not pressing enough. So give it just enough pressure, all right? Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try something just for fun, just to hear some notes playing at the same time. That's what a chord is. We're gonna play the third string, the second string, and the first string all at the same time. So watch my picking hand here. I'm going to start at the third string and just brush across the strings. Two, 
we're making an E major chord right now. This is just a baby version of it, even though it does contain all the notes of the full chord, but we're gonna double up some of the notes and make it sound really huge, okay? But it could be a little tricky to get the fingers uh, to follow our orders at first. So this one should be good. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our ring finger, our third finger here, and we're gonna place it on the fourth string, second fret, like this. So right away, that's kind of weird. So let's get the other finger in there now, just to complete it. Take your middle finger and place it on the fifth string, second fret. So you end up with this kind of shape right here. It's not really an obvious shape, like a straight line or anything like that, but you'll just grow to remember that as an E shape. Now, if you can make this shape, what I want you to do is I want you to take your pick, go to the fattest string on your guitar, the sixth string, and just sweep all the way across. Isn't that a great sound? Big sound. Okay, so instead of just doing the little three string version of it, we're doing the six string version of the E major chord. Now, some people have trouble fretting it the way we did in that order. So if you did have a little trouble, do it the opposite way, okay? So let's take our middle finger. This is the same chord, by the way. And let's go to the fifth string, second fret. We'll do that first. Now take your ring finger and tuck it underneath that finger on the fourth string, second fret. So this is a little bit more stable feeling. All right, now we can take our first finger and place it on the third string, first fret. Okay, let's strum through it. And we have the same chord. Sounds great. Now, the reason I choose this chord out of all of them is because all your fingers are in a little section here so you don't have to spread them out at all and do anything strange with them right away. And at the very minimum, you could still do just the baby chord and be fine. So it's a good chord to do the small version of if you want to. But I recommend if you're, you know, comfortable with the guitar, at least with the spider exercise feeling, you should be able to have the dexterity to play this chord. Keep working on it until it feels comfortable. Same rules apply, by the way, that they did for the individual notes. You want to keep your fingers curved and use your fingertips. Otherwise, if you flatten them out, you end up touching the other strings and you get like a <laughs> muted sound. So if you get that, make sure you really use your fingertips and then try it again. Get them out of the way of the uh, open strings. All right, so now's a good time to just practice a four downstroke strum. Everything's so basic today, I know, but it's supposed to be. We're gonna build up very soon. All right, let's take the picking hand and let's strum through all six strings. Pretend it's one big string. We're gonna do this four times. Ready, go. One, two, three, four. All right. So that's the beginning, all right? There are a couple other strums we're gonna do. Actually, we'll do one more today, just so you have two options. The other one is almost as easy, except we're gonna actually throw in an upstroke because a lot of people get kind of restless. They wanna go the other direction. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do downstroke, downstroke, and then we're gonna go down and then an up and then a down. So think down, 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 up, down. And your picking hand will follow. Ready, go. Down, 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 up, down. Again, down, 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 up, down. The next thing we're gonna do is I wanna give you a couple chords to work on, just so you can switch back and forth. Uh, one chord is great to work on, and you know, if you're really trying to master just one chord, stick with E for as long as you need to. But if you feel like you have it down, I want you to switch to another chord. So here's what we're gonna do. We're actually going to make a chord that shape that's very similar to this, it's really close by, so watch what we do. We take our index finger, we just lift it off. Now we take this grouping, the middle finger and ring finger, and we just move them towards the floor by one string each. So we just moved them over. Now what we do is we take our pinky that's kind of, you know, left out of the party, and we're gonna invite them in to the second string, second fret. So you kind of have to tuck it underneath the ring finger. So you have a lot of fingers in one fret. Isn't that crazy? So your middle finger, ring finger, and pinky are all in the second fret. 
each of them get their own string. Thank goodness. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to take our pick and go to the fifth string, one, two, three, four, five, and strum across five strings. Ready, go. That's called an A major chord. One more time, go. The biggest mistake people make is they include the sixth string and it gets a little too heavy sounding. So make sure you're starting at the fifth string, which by the way is the A string and this is the A chord, so it makes sense. Just like when we played the E string first, we play the E chord. So it all sort of equals out, right? All right, so realize that the transition to A is pretty simple once you understand how, how similar these chords are. So let's go back to E by taking our pinky off, moving this grouping of fingers back over to the fifth and fourth strings, and then adding our index finger to the third string first fret. Now we're back to the E major, go. Now I know some of you might be thinking that thumb's looking pretty wild, you know, you said to keep it in the back and now you're up here and doing all the stuff with it. That's what I mean, after a while, you know, the spider exercise, it's very important to keep your thumb in the back, but when you start getting in the chords, the thumb likes to start to move around and down the road, you're actually gonna use it as a fretting mechanism, all right? So it's gonna be one of the fingers and helping out. But as long as it's back here somewhere, you're okay. So what I want you to do is practice going from E major to A major and switching back and forth between those two. Now you don't have to instantly switch like you might think right away. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna play a certain amount of strums for the E, give you a little bit of time, move to the next chord and then do a certain strum. So we'll start with the four downstrokes because that's the most basic strum you can do. Let's go to the E major chord and we're gonna play that four times. Hopefully you guys have it all fretted. Ready, go. One, two, three, four. Now don't think you have to switch super fast today. You could even stop the sound if you want to. Lift up your index finger, move the other two fingers over. Now they're on the middle two strings. Add the pinky on the second string, second fret, and now play the five strings. Remember, the A chord starts on the fifth string. Four times, ready, go. One, two, three, four. Now our goal is to move back to the E chord. So lift up your pinky, move the grouping over, add the index, index finger, and let's do that four times, go. fully aware how frustrating that is to try to switch that fast at this point. So realize that this is supposed to happen over a period of time of practicing this week. Because lessons are typically once a week, private lessons, and so they have a whole week to work on this. All right, because next week we're going to get into the D chord. We're going to do all sorts of other things, but we'll leave it at that as far as how many chords we do today. Let's go back to E, and I want to try that other strum pattern just so you get a different feel. So once you have the E chord, let's do the down, 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 up, down, picking. Ready, go. Down, 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 up, down. Let's do it again. Down, 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 up, down. Take your time and switch to A. If you could go fast, that's great. I'm not expecting that today. All right, ready? A chord all ready to go. Go. Down, 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 up, down. One more time. Down. Some people ask me, well, how do you not hit the E string, you know, the fat string, when you do upstrokes and you're strumming a lot? Well, later on, that thumb that I was talking about is going to come over the top and touch that string just a little bit to kill it, so you end up not worrying about it. Isn't that great? All right, so let's go with that idea right now of switching between E and A and seeing what we can do with it. There are a lot of songs that actually include these chords. There's a one that was in the movie or the show Stranger Things, Should I Stay or Should I Go, where you could just go E to A and back to E. Isn't that cool? So that's just one example. And even just moving from E to A quickly back and forth eventually just sounds like you're playing a real song.
So don't discount the power of one or two chords because it could really go far. Especially when we start to add three chords, then you can play a million songs. Let's go ahead and uh, do one more, a couple more things because it's already, as far as my cameras go, 27 minutes in. 30 minutes goes by really fast when you're doing a private lesson. But let's recap really quick. We did all the posture stuff, holding the pick, all that stuff. Tuning, I tuned for you. Most likely if you're a private student, I would have tuned your guitar for you. Uh, would have recommended getting electric tuner. And then uh, we'll tune later on in other lessons. And then we did the spider exercise four times each, really getting our finger uh, technique down as much as possible. If you want to go crazy, go through all six strings, totally fine. Then we learned how to create chords, basically E, the baby version, the full version, and the A full version. By the way, this is the full grown up version. This isn't any like kids version at all. So you're, you're playing the real deal when you're doing these ones. And then we learned how to strum and how to move between those chords. And the last thing I wanna do, because I always wanna send you home reminding you how to play these chords. Nowadays I could just take a quick video and send it to a student. But what I like them to do is read a chord chart. So what you should be able to do is look at this chart, I'll put it on the screen, and be able to relate it to the chord that we played earlier, E major. Both of these are major chords, by the way, E major and A major. Later we'll do the minor, the sad versions of them. Those are great, but for today we're in the major world. So if you take a look at the chord chart, I don't have it in front of me, I'm just imagining it right now. I'm gonna make the strings obvious. They're gonna be vertical, up and down. And it's weird, because it's almost like you're looking at the guitar like this, like a guitar standing on a, on a guitar stand. And so, if you check out how the fingers go, the fingers are one, two, three, and four. The thumb will be a T. That's how we'll uh, signify it. All right, so now we have the middle finger, the second finger, on the fifth string, second fret. So you see how the frets are gonna be horizontal like this. So just take your middle finger and go to that fifth string, second fret. The ring finger is gonna to go to the fourth string, second fret. And even though the fingers on the real guitar are a little bit diagonal, on the actual gra uh, the chart, it's gonna look very up and down, like right on top of each other. Of course, that's pretty much impossible to do in real life. All right. And then what we'll do is we'll take our first finger and go to the third string, first fret, right here. Everything else has zeros at the top, which means you play it open. So, let's play that chord. When you learn the A chord, what's gonna happen is you're gonna see an X at the top. That just means you don't play that string, which I already told you earlier, you just avoid the sixth string when you play the A chord. But go ahead and create that using the chart, and then strum it, make sure it sounds good. Okay, so that's usually what I do for the first lesson. And like I said, it had a 99% retention rate. So people always came back because they got excited because they could do those first few things. And then from there, I taught them a couple more chords, some more strums. They were playing songs right off the bat. And then we dove deeper and deeper into the theory stuff. I uh, didn't hit them over the head right away with theory because I can scare people off really quick. So, um, you know, just get people playing guitar right away. And if you're new and you're taking these lessons, hopefully you could see how quickly you can play the guitar with just a few of the right moves in the beginning, okay? All right, like I said, if you enjoyed this lesson, check out theartofguitar.com. I have a whole library of all the lessons and we're building it constantly. I was putting uh, new lessons up every week. So uh, we'll catch you guys there and hopefully that lesson helped you out. We'll catch you later. Thanks, bye.